today we're going to talk about split the middle and it's our third method of factoring and so the third method of factoring you're going to use is called split the middle we use this method when we're factoring a quadratic with three terms and you see out there in parentheses a trinomial. Tri means three. Like tricycle has three wheels. Trinomial has three terms. The format that our factoring problem can be written in is ax squared <coughs> plus bx plus c equals zero. And we need to remember that we need to continue to watch out for greatest common factor. Just because we're not talking about greatest common factor specifically today doesn't mean that we don't still need to keep that in our minds when we're solving this problem. We're actually not solving, we're simplifying. But the steps to factoring split the middle. Here's our format. It's 3x squared plus 8x plus 4 that's ax squared plus bx plus c. And what we're going to do is we're going to multiply a and c together. Well, a is the number in front of the x squared term. c is the constant term. It doesn't have any variable. So we're going to multiply those two values together. So we get 3 times 4 is 12. And then we're going to look at all of those factors. Factors being things that multiply to equal 12. And I usually make a list. 1 in 12, 2 in 6, 3 in 4. There's all our factors. Find a pair of factors that will combine to give the number 8. So combine means it has to either add to be 8 or subtract to be 8. So, 1 and 12 is never going to combine to be 8. 2 and 6, however, will combine to, to give us 8. So, we're going to use the values of 2 and 6. And then we have to put in the appropriate signs. And luckily here on our first example, what we've got is we have everything that's positive. So, this means that 2 plus... 6 equals 8. So what we're going to do is we're going to put in 2x plus 6x. And by the way, you can put 6x first in there and 2x second. It doesn't matter the order of those blanks, but that's where we're going to put those two values. And now we're going to group. So we're going to group here and here. So that's what we've been working on the last two days, the grouping. What's in common in the first group? Well, it's going to be x. And then what's left here is we're left with 3x plus 2. 3x squared divided by x is 3x. We had two x's. We took out one. We have one left. Over here in our next group, between 6x and 4, our DCF is a 2. 6 and 4 are both even. And 6x divided by 2 is 3x, and 4 divided by 2 is 2. And now to finish this problem, remember, we find our GCF from both groups, and we only write it down once. And there we factor. So it's a good steps there to follow. And we're just going to practice a few more. As you might notice, this is the reverse of FOIL. You can check your answer by using FOIL, and it should match the original quadratic. So if we go back and look at what we just came up with, the 3x plus 2 times the x plus 2, well, let's FOIL. 3x times x is 3x squared. Outer terms. 3x times 2 is 6x. 2 times x is 
2x, and 2 times 2 is 4. First, outer, inner, last. When we combine our like terms, we end up with 3x squared plus 8x plus 4, the problem that we started with. That's a good checking mechanism when you're working problems or you're taking a quiz and you want to check to make sure that you got it right. But once again, what we're going to do is we're going to multiply A and C together. So A A is 5. C is 12. So 5 times 12 is 60. Next step. We're going to list all the factors of 60, which are 1 times 60, 2 times 30, 3 times 20, 4 times 15, 5 times 12, and 6 times 10. And now what we want to figure out is which ones combine, either add or subtract to be 19. And if you look here, we see that 4 and 15 are going to combine to be 19. And again, on our first example, without all the steps, we have um, both positives again, which is nice. Because we're going to write down 5x squared, and we're going to write down 12. And then we're going to fill in what we just found. We found out that 4x plus 15x gives us 19x. And now we can group. Here's our first group. Here's our second group. And what's in common here in our first group? Our GCF is x. And when we factor that out, we'll up with 5x plus 4. Over here in our second group, between 15 and 12, the GCF is 3. And we're left with 5x plus 4. And now we can finish. Our GCF of both groups is 5x plus 4. Remember that you only write it down once. And then we have the x plus 3. It's a little bit more complicated when we have a negative in front of the 13x, but the process is still the same. We're going to multiply a and c. a is 6, c is 5, and we end up with 6 times 5, which is 30. And the factors of 30 are 1 times 30, 2 times 15, 3 times 10, and 5 times 6. And we need to be careful on this problem because if we look really closely here, 2 and 15 will give us 13. In fact, if we do 2 minus 15, that gives us negative 13. And then if we happen to do negative 3 and negative 10, that will also give us negative 13. So what we have to watch out for here is what's going to multiply to be a positive number but add to be a negative number. And that's going to help us determine what we're going to put into our two spaces here. And in fact, 2 positive times negative will give us a negative, and negative times negative will give us a positive. So really the value that we want to use is going to be this negative 3 and negative 10. Negative 3x minus 10x. And if we're not sure, we can go back and check here, but we're going to factor by grouping. So what's in common in the first group is 3x. And if we factor out a 3x for our greatest common factor, 6 divided by 3 is 2, x squared divided by x is x. So we had two x's, we take out 1. Over here, factor out of 5, and we get 2x minus 1. And watch out, 
because there's a minus here in front of that five. And in general, what you have to remember is what's in the first parentheses better come up in the second parentheses. Negative five times negative one is positive five. But we could have looked at it as positive five divided by negative five is negative one. So now that we've factored here, we see our GCF from both groups is 2x minus 1. And then we have 3x minus 5. Our single 3x, our single minus 5, we factor. Now, don't write this down. But remember, we can FOIL that. If we're not sure that we have it right, we can FOIL it. 2x times 3x is 6x squared. 2x times negative 5 is negative 10x. Negative 1x times 3x is negative 3x. And negative 1 times negative 5 is positive 5. So we've got first, outer, inner, last. When we combine our like terms here, we get 6x squared minus 13x plus 5. That should be exactly what we started with in our problem. Now, what's in blue here is just checking. If we weren't sure, if we were right, we can always use FOIL. But that's the answer there that I just boxed off. Number three. Same kind of thing. One thing to recognize on this problem here is that our A is 1. So what we have when we multiply, A is 1 and C is negative 36. And actually, I don't even want to put the sign in there. I'll deal with the signs in a little bit. A is 1, C is 36, so 1 times 36 is 36. We multiply A times C. We look at all the factors of 36, which are 1 times 36, 2 times 18, 3 times 12, 4 times 9, and 6 times 6. And what we're looking for is what combines to be negative 5. And the only possibility where we're going to combine, that means that it has to add to be 5 or subtract to be 5, is this 4 and 9. And in fact, what we want to get is we want to come up with a negative 5, so this is going to have to be 4 minus 9. 4 minus 9 equals negative 5. So once we determine those values here, then we can go ahead and factor. And we're going to write down our x squared and our 36. And then we've got plus 4x minus 9x. And we've grouped. Here's our two groups. So what's in common in that first group? Well, there's an x. And then we're left with x plus 4. Watch out again here because there's a minus. But our greatest common factor between 9 and 36 is 9, wrong color. But when we factor out that 9, 9x nine divided by 9 is x. Negative 36 divided by negative 9 is positive 4. And then we've got x plus 4, x plus 4 from both groups. We only write down the GCF from both groups once, and then we've got x minus 9. So some of you, this is probably looking quite familiar for, and some of you, it's been two years since you've seen it. But as we take a look here at problem number four, what we should always be asking ourselves is, do we have a GCF in the overall problem? As we take a look here, we see two and four and 48. Those numbers are all even numbers. So we need to start by Factoring on GCF, and it's going to be 2. And then we're we'll left with x squared. 2x squared divided by 2 is x squared. 4x divided by 2 is 2x. 48 divided by 2 is 24. And now we can deal with our a and our c. a is 1, the number in front of the x squared term. c is 24. So 1 times 24 is 24. And the factors of 24 are 
1 in 24, 2 in 12, 3 in 8, 4 in 6. And what we need is we need to combine to be 2. So, the only place where we can combine, that means we either add or subtract to be 2, is going to be here. It needs to combine to be a positive 2, which ultimately means that we're going to have negative 4 plus 6. Negative 4 plus 6 is positive 2. We still have a GCF there of 2, but I'm not going to deal with that right at the moment here. I'm going to write down our x squared and our 24, and then we've got minus 4x plus 6x, and we're grouping. Here's our first group. Here's our second group. What's in common in the first group is in x. And then we're left with x plus 4. Over here, what's in common in the second group is 6, and we're left with x times 4. And now, when we look for our GCF, we've got an x minus 4 in the first group and x minus 4 in the second group. So we have x minus 4. And then we have our singles left, our x and our 6. But one more thing. Don't forget, at the very start of the problem, we factored out a 2. That's a factor as well. The whole concept is called factor. We want to write down all of the factors. Again, as we take a look at problem number five, do we have a GCF? And we hope so, because 9 times 66, which would be our A times our C, is going to be a pretty big number. But let's try to factor out a GCF of 3. 9x squared divided by 3 is 3x squared. 15x divided by 3 is 5x. 66 divided by 3 is 22. Once again, I'm not going to pay attention to that GCF of 3 for a few minutes because our A value this time is 3 and our C value is 22. So at least it makes it a more manageable number when we multiply 3 times 22 together which is 66. Coincidence that it ended up to be the same number that was in the original problem. Coincidence. Doesn't happen very often. But the factors of 66 are 1 and 66, 2 and 33, 3 and 22. Um, 6 and 11. And luckily here on that last factor, I think that 6 and 11 is going to work for us. Again, we need to get these factors here to combine to be negative 5. And that's going to mean for us that it's going to be 6 minus 11 to give us negative 5. I know we found the initial GCF. So we've got 3x squared here, and we've got minus 22 there. And then we've got 6 x minus 11x and it's going to be plus 6x and we can prove what's our GCF in the first group what's our GCF in the second group our GCF in the first group between 3 and 6 the biggest number that goes into both 3 and 6 is 3 and then we have x squared and x we're going to take the smallest exponent and when we divide, 3 divided by 3 is 1. x squared divided by x is x. We had two x's, we took out 1. 6 divided by 3 is 2. Over here in our second group, GCF. And watch out there because we do have that negative, so that always makes things a little bit dicey. But our GCF is 11. 11x 11 divided by 11 is x. Negative 22 divided by negative 11 is positive 2. Negative divided by negative is positive. And now we can get very close to finishing because we have x plus 2 in both groups. So we're only going to write down once. And then we've got our single here, 3x minus 11. Don't forget that at the very beginning of the problem, we factored out a 3. 
So our greatest common factor of three needs to go out there in front. So lastly here, when we look at these problems, we need to look and see, do we have a GCF? If we have a GCF, we're going to use it. We're going to factor it out. And we do have a GCF in this problem. And it's going to be an X. There is an X in all three terms. So we had three X's. We took out one. So now we have two. We had two X's. We took out one. Now we have one. We had one X. We took it out. Now we have none there. But then to finish here, in terms of splitting the middle, our A is 2 and our C is 5, and 2 times 5 is 10. And when we look at the factors of 10, it's 1 times 10 and 2 times 5. We want factors that combine to be 11, either adding to be 11 or subtracting to be 11, which is going to be the 1 and the 10. And in fact, what it has to be is it has to combine to be negative 11, which means that it's going to be negative 1 and negative 10. I know that we have a GCF out there of x, which I'll deal with in a few minutes. But as we finish this problem here, um, I don't need to write down that x right at the moment. We've got 2x squared and plus 5. And then we've got minus 1x and minus so we're going to have to group and watch out for that negative right there. So we've grouped here and now we're looking for the GCF in the first group, which happens to be an X. And when we factor out that X, we're left with 2X minus 1. Over in our second group, we need to be careful, again, because there's a minus, but what's in common in 10 and 5? In other words, what's the biggest number that goes into both 10 and 5? It's 5, and we get 2x minus 1. Well, now, by the way, 5 divided by negative 5 is positive 5 divided by negative 5 is negative 1. That's where I got the negative 1. But now we have a 2x minus 1 in the first group and a 2x minus 1 in the second group. So here's our 2x minus 1. And then our singles, x minus 5. And finally, don't forget, at the beginning of the problem, we took out an x. For a remainder of our period, we're going to work on um, the front side of the paper that your substitute's going to hand out. Hopefully I'll see you tomorrow.